policymakers, they have been increasingly focused on mitigating foreign exchange settlement risk with a push towards payment versus payment settlement in which the final transfer in one currency occurs if and only if the final transfer of a payment in the counter currency takes place. Now, both the updated best practice code for the FX industry, that's the FX Global Code, and the Financial Stability Board are advocating greater PVP settlement to enhance cross-border payments. Now, this is a big subject, really important, and I'm delighted to say that I'm now joined by Marc Bill de Gessé, who is CEO at CLS. And in the time that we have together, we're going to examine why there is currently so much focus on FX settlement risk. So it's good to see you. We're catching up because you reminded me that we met at Cybos in Melbourne. Was it, was it with Melbourne? Or was it, it was in Australia, yeah, right? Sydney, Sydney, Sydney. I beg your pardon. It was Cybos in Sydney. So it's good to see you again after all this time. But look, I guess the question has to be that if volumes of payment versus payment settlement are actually on the rise in CLS, then why is it that policymakers are so concerned about forex settlement risk mitigation? Something clearly isn't quite right. Yeah, no, not really. In fact, the fact is that the FX global market is big, is uh, systemically very relevant. Uh, we, we settle every day, for instance, in CLS, uh, 6.5 trillion on average USD equivalent. So it's really big amounts that we are speaking. Mm. And if there is a disruption, obviously, it will have effect, systemic effect on the financial markets locally also, so not only globally. Therefore, the necessity, as you just mentioned, to bring together payment versus payment mechanism, mm. taking away principal risk from the settlement yeah. process is very important. It's a Otherwise, in the system. Absolutely. So it would create really disruption completely in the economies. And having secure system is very important. Having secure system is one thing, but explaining best practice to adopt them is very important. That's why the global code has been reinforced, reinforcing its messages, in particular on settlement risk to really bring new mitigations and to have as much as possible those mechanisms in place and used by the market participants. Mm. But as you said, the market in PVP, it is growing. So where is this growth coming from and why? What is driving it? Well, behind you have the big theme of uh, globalization. So there is a lot of activities which are getting there. There is also the fact that the economies are coming into a cycle where macroeconomic uh, mm. dimension is changing and therefore a lot of opportunity to buy and sell those currencies are taking place and you need robust market infrastructure in place to handle those volumes. We, we have grown in volumes uh, for more than 15% uh, in the last uh, years almost. Uh, in the last year? Yeah, yeah. we are now settling 1.1, 1.2 million transactions every day. Uh, we were just below a million a year ago. And uh, as much the volume, the value also is growing. So as I was saying, we were close to 6 trillion a year ago, and now we are 6.5 trillion per day this year. So it's really growing, and the necessity to have those infrastructure is very important. Absolutely. And in terms of that growth, are there specific regions which are registering greater growth than others? Well, in a way, yes. The whole market is growing, but yes, we see in APAX uh, greater growth than what we can see in other regions. So it grows faster, I would say. But clear exchanges with China are growing faster than the rest of the uh, foreign exchange market. And the necessity to find solutions for those currencies is very, very important and at the top of the agenda of policymakers as much as, uh, as market, I would say, uh, service providers. Mm. And, and in terms of that growth, I mean, do you see the volumes in, in settlement actually continuing to rise? I mean, and, it, and happening, of course, against a backdrop of turbulence where I guess that you might think it would slow it down, but clearly not. No, <laughs> no, no, indeed, uh, we, we can see that the market is somehow uh, uh, necessitating these capacities to grow, and we have capacity to absorb those mm. uh, additional volumes. We made a peak settlement uh, activity, close to 3 million transactions not so far ago, and uh, on one day. Uh, one day. As <laughs> much on one day, we settled, uh, which was a day where you had a lot of contracts settling, so specifically on a quarterly basis in the future market, and you reach really peaks, which was over 15 trillion USD on one day. 50 trillion USD is huge. Eh? We speak of many times a year budget of US, for instance, eh? on one day. So it's really big amounts. And the necessity, again, to have those uh, uh, channels uh, safe uh, is very important. I'm just amused at the casualness with which you throw out these numbers. <laughs> it's like, it's just, it just flows over your head. It's, it doesn't really matter. We're used to it. We can handle it. But look, given the volume of trades that you're, you're dealing with, I mean, do you find that you're having to, to provide 
new PVP settlement services, you have to you have to offer up more because there's so much business coming in your direction. So there is different element to your question that we can answer. Yes, and we make sure first that our basic service is remaining as safe and as resilient as possible. So we are investing a lot of effort to make this resilient and our business continuity is really the focus of attention to deliver every day a safe service to the market. So very important for us. Um, we have to say also that CLS through the mechanism of PVP is associated with a multilateral netting process, which is delivering a very strong liquidity efficiency to the market. Mm -hmm. So to settle those 6.5 trillion, sorry for the big numbers, <laughs> you need only, if I may say so, 65 billion of liquidity. So you reduce the liquidity by 99% thanks to the mechanisms which allow this uh, strong multilateral netting capacity. Mm -hmm. However, to be able to cover the growing needs uh, uh, globally, it's complex. It requires very strong, I would say, cohesion in the legal and regulatory framework as much as the operational context. So it's a bit technical, I'm afraid, but the point is that's why the regulators are putting a lot of emphasis on developing best practices and having also initiatives to push uh, the regulatory authorities to converge towards strong legal system and capacities to interlink those sure. regions. I mean, look, it is technical, but you've explained it beautifully, so it does make sense. But let's flip things on its head because, look, when PVP settlement is not available, how do you think that the industry can actually address and indeed mitigate settlement risk? Yeah, so there is different level that you can already bring to the market. The first is to try to think how you will bring PVP in those contexts, uh, which may take some time. As I was saying, if you have to adapt a regulatory framework, you have to change law. Changing law is a long process with a political, local engagement which can take, unfortunately, years. We are trying to embark a new currency in our system, Chilean pesos, uh, and the regulatory this is reforms. The new one, the Chilean pesos. We are trying to bring it in. Ah. Five years that we are trying. <laughs> they had to change the law twice, and we are still waiting the second change in right. law. So but, it, but it's how close do you think you, you will, be, will, will, will be to actually adding it to the basket? Well, we hope by 2025 that they would be in. So it's a long process to embark a new currency. So in the meantime, what we have done is to propose still solution to, to give as much as possible operational release uh, to our membership and to, in particular, the market by having mitigation measures. So we have a CLS net service, which is basically bringing the instruction together in a straight through process and allowing their matching and calculation of bilateral exposures that they have to each participants. And then they have to settle that themselves outside. But at least they have the whole process, which is streamlined, straight through process. So you mitigate all operational risks and the capacity to better handle your bilateral position. Settlement will have to come at some point on this. So this is quite successful. It has started already uh, three years ago. It is ramping up now. Just a couple of numbers, sorry, I'm going to, to, to bring you billions again, but on average, we I, I just <laughs> netted 100 billion every day. And half of it is basically against RMB. Uh, so it's a huge, obviously, APAX currency uh, that we are uh, not netting every day, not settling, uh, which is coming in. So big volumes are coming through that, and we see the, the values that it brings to the market who already have these netting capacities. Right, but look, this is fascinating stuff, and sadly, time has gone against us. We thank you so much for being on the set and also giving us that little exclusive about the Chilean currency. I'd love to know what other ones you're targeting, but we'll save yeah. that for another day, possibly in Toronto next year. But Marc Belduchesse, CEO at CLS, thank you so much for joining me here on Cybos Television, a reunion of friends, and hopefully we'll see you next year in Toronto. Thank you very much for your time.